So let's take a look at the definition and clinical presentation of allergic rhinitis and asthma. The World Allergy Organization defines allergic rhinitis as a symptomatic disorder of the nose, which results from IgE-mediated immunological reaction following exposure to an allergen. And the major symptoms are rhinorrhea, nasal itching, obstruction and sneezing, which are all reversible either spontaneously or with treatment. Rhinitis can be divided into allergic, non-allergic, occupational or infective, but the majority, 75% of cases, are triggered by an allergy. And these allergens can be um, subdivided into perennial and seasonal. Perennial includes house dust, mite and animal dander, whereas seasonal includes grass, tree and weed pollen and mold spores. So the symptoms of allergic rhinitis or hay fever includes rhinorrhea, which is a runny nose, nasal congestion or nasal blockage, sneezing, features of allergic conjunctivitis like watery, itchy or irritated eyes, pruritus or itching of the nose, palate and throat. And additional symptoms include ear symptoms such as itchy ears or the, the sensation of blocked ears, sinus symptoms like headaches or pressure, heaviness over the sinuses, post-nasal drip, altered smell and taste, and exacerbation of asthma as we've discussed, but also of eczema. So when you look at these two images here, um, and these images were taken in our clinic on flexible nasal endoscopy. The first image shows a normal nasal cavity in which you can see the inferior turbinate, a lovely nasal um, space for breathing through, and also the smooth, pink, healthy mucosa lining. Whereas when you look at the second image, um, you can see the enlarged, bulky, swollen ter inferior turbinate, which is nearly obstructing the full nasal cavity. And the mucosal colour that's lovely and pink in the initial image is now pale and has lost that pink colour. And um, you can see increased mucus and stickiness, um, and all of this due to chronic um, allergic challenge. So as you know, asthma is characterised by chronic airway inflammation and defined by shortness of breath, chest tightness, wheezing and coughing. And these symptoms can vary over time, can vary with intensity and there is variable ex um, expiratory airflow limitation. And when you look at this image, what's striking is the difference between the small airway or bronchiole in the normal lung versus the asthmatic lung and the structural and inflammatory changes typical um, in asthma lead to bronchial thickening and swelling, increased mucus production and bronchoconstriction. So there's a new United Airways disease approach for asthma and allergic rhinitis. The idea being that we breathe through our nose all the way down into the base of our lungs and so if we're going to manage airway disease we should manage the full airway. And we know that more than 80 or 90% of asthmatics have allergic rhinitis and up to 40% of allergic rhinitis patients have asthma. And so the treatment of nasal inflammation in asthmatics has been shown to improve asthma outcomes. And so those patients with persistent asthma should be assessed for allergic rhinitis and vice versa. The impact on quality of life is significant and 80% of patients um, complain of um, an altered quality of life where they have poor sleep, they're fatigued, their energy and concentration are reduced and there is an association with low mood, depression, anxiety and even ADHD in children. Um, allergic rhinitis um, will impact on their ability to attend school or work but can also um, impact on their ability to participate in sporting or social activities like hobbies and a UK study of teenagers um, who suffer with seasonal allergic rhinitis showed a significant difference in exam performance during hay fever season with dropping of grades during that time.